Hi, in this first video we're going to be talking about VAT. Now VAT is a subject which has many, many different repercussions and most people fear the VAT man more than anyone else, so it makes sense to talk about that first. And right now we're in the hub of uh, an accountancy office and uh, it's important to get a feel for how the VAT can work in practice. So, what's VAT? VAT is value added tax. It's a tax which you're going to pay for every time you buy goods and services and within certain aspects of what you buy doesn't have VAT on it for a variety of reasons. Sometimes it can be exempt which will include postage. Sometimes it will be because it's come from another country uh, in, within the EU and sometimes it could have come from, from outside the UK. All these, or outside the EU, all these will have a different repercussion as to how you're going to treat it when you're accounting for VAT. But perhaps the first thing you should be aware of is that really, do you need to register for VAT? Most people look to register for VAT when they have to. If you have a, um, if your customer is in fact um, a general public member, member of the public, perhaps you're hairdressing, that's going to be therefore an additional cost to them but if your customer is a, is a company maybe the company is um, a large corporate clearly in that situation you will have VAT you will be um, reclaimed by them so it, first of all you will ask yourself to your customers is VAT actually a cost or is it something which they can simply offset as a general rule if it's something which is simply going to be offset it will make sense to actually go and uh, set off that VAT uh, and register VAT and uh, your main customer is looked after. If indeed you're below the VAT threshold, which currently stands at 75,000, it's something which you may want to think about not registering for VAT because of that cost to your customer. So first of all, address do I need to register, yes or no. Once you Okay, you've uh, covered to say, do you need to register? And the answer is presumably yes, that's why you're still listening to this component. Uh, you then got to decide how you're going to be uh, taxed from the VAT perspective. You can be taxed on the sales that you generate, and also you can be taxed on the money that you bring in. Now, those are two different things can be very similar and they can be the same figure but they are indeed two different things. One is treated as a, as a cash basis sale, money that you received and another is going to be a sale based on an invoice that you generate, you put onto your computer system and that's when you're going to be paying it. So first of all decide how I'm going to be paid, cash basis or invoice. And most accounting systems will accommodate those two requirements and make your job very easy, but sometimes they don't, so you need to be aware of those different um, components there, and make sure you're consistent quarter after quarter. Okay, so you decided to be on uh, cash basis, you can, cannot continue to cash basis if you're over a certain VAT uh, limit. Now those limits are likely to uh, not bother a typical uh, person that's reading this, so I won't even bother with you to telling you what those limits are, but they're pretty damn high. So uh, unless your limits are over 1.2 million, I wouldn't worry about that. You can claim on a cash basis. Okay, so you've got another option for you, which is to declare how you're going to be paying, um, how frequently you're going to be paying for the VAT and how, how often you're going to be accounting for it. You have a choice of monthly, quarterly, or indeed, you can do it annually. Now there's an advantage to each of those depending on your situation and I'll highlight to you the, the main benefits there. For monthly, it's going to be if you're going to be receiving money back. So receive money back if you're going to be invoicing out which doesn't have VAT on it for a variety of reasons and you're going to be recovering VAT on the things that you're buying. So clearly in that situation, typically this could be a pharmaceutical company whereby you're not you know, you're able to uh, 
um, have exempt to supplies you're charging, but you're going to be recovering back some VAT on what you buy. Another option would be to go for a standard default, which is the quarterly method, and you can choose a quarter that fits in with your year end. Don't just choose one which uh, uh, you're given. Try and change that if you can. Ring up the National uh, Help Service and change that period to one that fits in with your year end. And the other option is one of um, going for annual. Now annual sounds great, means you pay once a year. Well, it's not quite like that. You actually pay over uh, a series of different monthly payments. The monthly payments should be set at the same figure. If your um, liability changes, then you have a responsibility to, uh, to change that liability. But as a, as a rule of thumb, you're going to be paying over nine months. And then on the 10th, 11th month, you actually don't have to pay anything. But on the 12th month, you then declare what your liability is. And you pay any unders or overs for that year. Now that can be great if you just don't want to get in the habit of paying, sorting things out on a frequent basis. But as a general bit of advice, most people tend to choose the quarterly. Why? Because it's just a frequent enough to ensure that people are, are, are catching up themselves. And it's not such a hassle with being too frequent as monthly. And because you're paying for it every quarter, you haven't got these unders and overs which you have to account for. So that's generally what people would do on the VAT. I hope you've enjoyed this little quick uh, webinar and I hope to uh, see you in, in a minute.